Coach, what that coach Toyota Wilson, Jeanette Jackson, Pierre Etienne, Coach, you can make your opening statement and then we can the question. You ready for me? Okay. Ah, boy. Another exciting, I couldn't make it, you know, any more exciting. It wasn't playing four overtimes. To be honest with you, I didn't even know uh, how many overtimes we played. Uh, first of all, I want to give credit to Mississippi Valley and Elvis. He did an unbelievable job, a uh, phenomenal job. I, I picked him coach of the year. Um, that's what he does. He did a great job. His first year, just like me, his first year he went to the conference championship. Um, and I know how it feels to get there and how you want it so bad. And I think everybody on that floor wanted it. Everybody on that floor wanted it really bad. And we just kept pushing. And we had a little bit of life left. And we made some big plays. We made some bonehead plays in the two overtimes. We had the last shot here. Took a shot with 12 seconds left. They had last shot. Um, we didn't execute well the last couple overtimes. But this last one, we crunched down. No field goals in those last fourth overtime. No field goals, they had two free throws, and that was the game. Defense, I think that was the whole thing of the game. Defense was the whole title of that game. But our girls, I mean, I credit our girls. They were relentless. They were, I mean, they never, they said they can go five more. When that last three and one was over, I said, guys, we can't go too many more. And Puff was like, coach, we can go all night. So, I mean, if they were, they were going to will ourselves to win, and they weren't going to take anything else. Coach, how does this win the, the four overtimes? How, how does this probably rank in, in maybe in your career? I mean, that's, this is at the top. This is this is uh, ESPN Classic. It should be on tonight <laughs> on ESPN Classic. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, the tip in from the girl. I told the girls to tip it back. They didn't. Valley tipped it in. I mean, there was so much suspense, and it was awesome. Um, this is at the top, though, along with uh, me being we, we, we beat Memphis this year. That was another big one. So, but this is awesome. This is at the top. I'm gonna enjoy it tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> and then talk about that fourth overtime. You had, I think, seven points before that, and you scored six, and you had that scoop shot. Just talk about, you know, what you were able to do in that fourth overtime. Well, I know we were getting tired, so uh, we kept pushing ourselves. We were just determined. We was, we was on our high horse, and uh, Coach kept telling me to step it up, step it up. So that was motivating me, and I knew I had to. If we were going to win, I had to score two, so I was just motivated. <coughs> this is for Latia. It seemed like you kind of would, you would want to set the tone for your team. Like I saw you pick yourself up like 20 times, like Dwayne Wade. Like you were just determined to get get that W. Cool. This is my last one. I had to go out with a bang. We wasn't losing. That's like I told Coach. We can go all night. We want to. I bet you they'll leave before we do. But we we weren't going off that that court without that dub. I wasn't going to let that happen. How you feeling physically? <laughs> oh, uh, like a champ. <laughs> Coach, would you credit this win to the veteran lady, lady team being here in this situation, being the turn in the face of games, not as remotely close as this one, but facing tough games in the last two years? I just, they just love tournament time. Um, you're a veteran once you're halfway through the season, so all our girls have been here last year. And that was the big thing we kept preaching. We've been here, we've been here. And I think that's another reason why we pulled it out. We, we knew what it took, and we knew what it, we know what it takes. And they made plays late. And we had, I mean, we were down three or four a couple times. And we, we came back and willed to win. Oshins came in and gave good minutes when Larissa fouled out. Laura, Lauren Washington came in when Jaquandra Williams fouled out. It was a total team effort. And, and like I said, I mean, these girls really won. I mean, they played a game and a half. A game and a half. And that wasn't, that wasn't, you were exhausted. So that all was left was, was your will and your heart, and, your, and, your, and that was it. Everybody was tired. It was just who was going to make the right plays at the right time in the right scenario. And we made those plays, and that's why we came out with, with three years in a row. I mean, this is like home court, I told y'all. How and does it feel to uh, be repeat champions for the third time in this conference? It's indescribable. I mean, I hate losing probably more than I love winning, and these girls just... Through the ups and downs, they were doing whatever it takes. They they fought adversity, and they never thought they were going to lose. And I mean, to 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 look to leave, I mean, Kier and Puff to leave on top, 
they can always say, listen, we never lost on that court. My career, we've always won. We got a ring. They can never say they lost. So I just think that's just an awesome feeling and this just priceless. Let's see, what does it feel like to have four rings though? Great. I'm great now. I can probably say I'm great. Got four rings. I'm great. I just feel wonderful. Like this this is the most important ring right here. I, I just feel I'm so excited. What do you think is the biggest reason why you were able to kind of persevere and never end up losing it? I, tournament game in your career. Relentless. That's it. Yeah. Keep pushing. Every time we won one, I felt like I still didn't have one. My drive, my hunger. That's what kept me going. After the game, it looked like you were going to try and keep the ball. Did they let you keep that ball or not? I hope so. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the last thing I was going to ask you is, uh, I know she went and hugged some, some people on the stands. Who, who was that that you ran? My mother. Okay. She's been through a lot with me. <laughs> I'm just so happy right now, yeah. I can't even express the way I feel. This person's from here. Um, what adjustment did you have to make when they kind of start changing on you? Because you came out with the hot hand, and uh, they like, well, we're going to let us let her beat us. And then you came back here towards the end down the stretch in the fourth overtime. So what adjustments did you have to make when they changed up the defense? Uh, I had to just, they had to get my team, my other teammates involved once they played the boxing one. Because without my other teammates in, I don't want to be able to do nothing. So, Puff, JJ, and all the other ladies came strong to help us get this win. And how did you feel like it? Because it seemed like every time it came off your hand, I thought it was going to go in. <laughs> I thought so too, but <laughs> you don't miss them. You don't miss them. Why did you run into the locker room at one part of the game? Uh, she wasn't feeling well. Yeah. Yeah, she had an upset stomach. It was a couple times she ran into the locker room. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, this, that early game, they only had breakfast. We got up at 7, um, 30 and watched film and walked through at the hotel. I mean, we did a lot this morning, and they didn't have the usual routine pregame meal. We just had breakfast, and they didn't eat a lot. probably just cereal and kept it light. Um, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, she just had cereal, and that was it. So she was a little, somebody was a little upset. So, so in order for you to not see what what had happened, she had to run out. Coach, comment on the on the uh, the quality of the athletic program with both Purdue men and women in the championship round of the tournament. Yeah, I think that that shows that tells a lot. Um, I'm really close with Coach Rem. He actually, um, him and another assistant actually called me to come and coach here when I first came to Prairie View. So I never would have been here if it wasn't for them. Um, I used to do the Laker camps, and I kept in contact with him. And so he brought me here. He's like a big brother to me, and I'm really tight with their program. And I think all the girls are tight with their program. And you know, we we got preseason picked first, both teams. I don't know when that's ever happened before, and I don't know when the last time both teams have gone to the championship and won the championship. But um, we have each other's backs, and that that goes as a test to our program and where we're going and where we've been and the dynasty that we've created. Coach, you get to this point. Year in and year out, year after year, that's no accident. If you have to write the recipe to get here, what would it be to get to the championship game as many times consecutively? <laughs> I think consistency, um, sticking with your guns, um, obviously recruiting, but just you know, knowledge of the game. Um, but it's really it's the players. I can't play for them. I only can put them in a situation to be successful. And you know, when the president and the AD believed in me to take over at 28 years old. You know, they believed I had the qualities to keep them a champion. And the players, I think I had to instill them to understand that they were still champions and they are champions. And um, just, I just hate to lose. That mentality, that mentality always winning, that keeps you up on top. My last game, I had to come out with a bang. I wanted to get the dub, another ring. So I had to fight. I had to keep my teammates strong. Coach Robinson said that uh, down the stretch, he's pretty much let it, let it go one on one, kind of rely on on defense. Was that the case on on your end as well? How many plays sets did you run? Yeah, we really were trying to crunch down on defense. I wanted to get the ball moving because they were face guarding Kier. At one point, they were boxing one. But they were playing man to man, and I knew a lot of them were foul trouble. We were in double bonus for the first, since the first or second overtime. And I kept telling the girls, stop selling. Your legs were tight, especially in the air ball. 
Gear I missed a couple threes. Our legs were dead. You had to go to the basket. So I kept telling me we had to do some offenses where we're moving and get to go to the basket because number one, they're not going to foul. Number two, um, if they do foul, we get to the line. And number three, you have a chance of making a shot. Um, so I wasn't trying to go so much one on one, but I knew he was going inside. We took away the threes. They were hitting threes the first half. We took that away, and they were going inside and said, "Hey, well, I'm gonna take two for a three, before a three. So um, we made some huge stops though inside. We we stopped fouling. We doubled, I think, strong three or four times. Really good strong doubles inside, and made that adjustment just like he did. Um, but he's a good coach. He gonna mix it up. Um, I was looking down at him. He was smiling, smiling to me. I was smiling to him, and we knew it was a hard fought game. Coach, can you comment on Asia Hampton, how she came in off the bench uh, as a young sophomore and stepped up as if she was a veteran? Yeah, Asha, I mean, even if you remember yesterday's game, she had one rebound. And that one rebound won us the game. She does, I mean, even if she comes in, she only gets one rebound. I mean, today she had three rebounds. And she had two huge rebounds. And she finished a couple shots when they penetrated and kicked to her. And those were huge. Even Larissa felt really bad. I mean, she was crying because like, she missed two layups. We would have won the game. She missed two layups. And we would have won the game. They dropped two dimes to her and she missed the lane. She felt really bad. And you know, they got to understand, you got to keep moving on. It was in the past, you can't change it. But Asha was huge. And just everybody that comes in the game, they give, they compliment in some way. They give something to the game. It's I'm not asking for 10 and 12. I'm asking for two or three. Or just a defensive stop or a double or a deflection or a tip. And I don't expect everything. Everybody can't give everything the same that everyone gives. So I expect different things from JJ that I expect from Latia. So they understand their roles, and we meet about that all throughout the year on what their roles are going to be. And they, once you get your team and your team trust in what their roles are, you're going to want to have the battle. Which I'm going to the, to, the, to, the big, to the big girl tournament, or y'all just going to let it hang out in the NCAAs? Just hang out? What's that mean? Y'all going to let it hang out, just go all out? Oh, yeah, no, no doubt. I think, you know, when we went to play UConn last year, um, Gino was cursing his team out at halftime because we were only down 12. And they were on one seat, and we were in their, in their backyard. Um, we're going to go out there and prepare like we do every game, like I prepare for these last three games. I was up last night until 1 in the morning, got up at 6 in the morning, the girls met at 8 in the morning. You can sleep after the season, but, I mean, the girls got to be prepared, and we're going to prepare. They still got every scout. Even though we didn't know who we played, they got to scout every game for this tournament. Every night this morning, they got to scout for every game, no matter who we play, because we prepare the same way. And so we'll do the same thing with whoever we get on Selection Monday. Now, your, your, your triple crowns up. With a victory in the NCAA tournament, now take this program uh, to another height. I hope so. I believe so. We're not trying to look to go anywhere. I'm not going anywhere, so we're gonna keep it at tops. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. Let's go, baby. Uh -huh. <laughs>